Across all of Books 17 through 20, uh, there is an interesting new language that is afoot in the story. Um, the story starts to move, move uh, by secret signs and secret codes. Uh, we've already seen uh, Odysseus and Athena especially share some secret codes. Uh, they do their winks and their nods back and forth, and uh, there's an intimate circle of knowledge that that creates. Um, but there's further uh, uh, kinds of uh, richness in, in secret languages uh, that gets built into 17 through 20, and it's worth us paying a little bit of attention to what this is all about. Uh, in antiquity, it was understood that messages from the gods were built into the world around us and that they were not just leaving us hanging, that we had to figure out everything on our own, but they were purposefully trying to send us messages in uh, the otherwise innocuous things that seemed to be happening around us. Uh, so if there was a strange coincidence, something fell off of a, of a mantelpiece or something, we would say to ourselves, oh my God, you know, there must be a god trying to talk to us. Uh, the gods talk to us in certain kinds of ways. Uh, they talk to us through the behaviors of animals, so the flights of birds, uh, the croak of a frog before a storm, uh, the uh, uh, screeches of a bird or the flight path, the, the darting to the left or to the right. Um, they also were interested in things like thunder and lightning. Uh, overheard words were also important. So if you were walking past a window and you just someone just happened to be saying, you know, they'll, you'll win the lottery today to their friend. That was a message for you if you just happen to hear it. And then, indeed, you were supposed to win the lottery that day. So you want to make sure you hear that overheard word. Uh, there are direct visions that sometimes people get. Uh, so if you sort of see something and then uh, uh, there's, there's a, a, a vision of, uh, that is going to be resonant for you in your future somehow, uh, about a revealing, about a, a future state of events. Uh, there are dreams uh, uh, that the ancients are interested in. Uh, the gods were thought to send messages this way to us so we could uh, hear uh, what was uh, going on in their own minds and what was going to happen in the universe as long as we paid attention uh, to what we saw in our dreams. So things like birds, lightning, thunder, uh, the gods visiting us in dreams, these were thought not just to be you know, strange coincidences or kind of you know, intuitive uh, things that we might use our intuition to draw conclusions from. Uh, so, you know, I just don't like the feel of this place or this seems a little bit strange to me. I'm not sure why. When you and I start talking about intuition, uh, it's during those moments that the Greeks start talking about signs. Uh, they don't talk about uh, um, intuitive knowing. They talk about knowing by signs. Um, there are signs that uh, show up throughout all these books. Uh, the divine ones I want to talk about in just a second, but also there are signs that show up just physically uh, that are there giving information uh, that sometimes uh, some people are able to see and other times other people are not. Take a look at what happens uh, around just the body of Odysseus. It itself is a kind of sign. Uh, the Greeks thought that uh, a great person would have a marvelous physique and would be beautiful. Um, so when we see this beggar, and on occasion we get little glimpses that there's an amazing physique underneath all those rags, uh, we should be thinking to ourselves, if we're smart Greeks, well, this can't be just any beggar. This must be someone really important. Well, the uh, suitors get a chance to see this happening uh, at a couple of really interesting points, and they sort of blow it. They don't draw the right conclusion. Page 361, uh, Melanthius is the goat herd uh, who is giving Odysseus a hard time at the time, uh, and he hauls off and kicks Odysseus, you know, really hard, right in the hip. Um, and the, the, the kick, though, doesn't leave any mark. It just kind of bounces off. Uh, if you went ahead and kicked someone in the hip, you would think that it would destabilize them, but Odysseus is so strong that the kick basically just bounces off. He's impervious to that blow. No one around seems to notice that that just happened. Uh, the suitors are not good at drawing conclusions from the signs around them. Uh, then we have Antinous, who is this uh, lead suitor, is all, the most awful of the awful suitors. Uh, Antinous on page 369. Uh, picks up a stool and hurls it at Odysseus. Well, this just bounces off of him. It, again, doesn't leave a mark. Uh, and the suitors don't draw the right conclusion that there is probably someone other than just a, a, a wayward beggar here. Uh, we have in his fight with Iris on page 377, uh, we see Odysseus you know, picking up the rags that are forming his garment, and we see huge thigh muscles rippling. Um, the suitors take note of this, but they don't draw any conclusions from it that, hey, this guy might not be uh, the guy we think it is. Uh, so there are signs coursing around in these events. Uh, some of them are purposeful and intentional, like when uh, Athena gives the wink to Odysseus and Odysseus is ready to uh, give a wink back. Uh, Telemachus gets in on these kind of uh, signs eventually. There are the signs uh, that are being registered in the events around us, like Odysseus's body, and it sort of 
revealing itself, if you know how to draw the conclusion. Uh, but I wanted to close this consideration of signs by looking at what the Greeks would have thought of as the most important of the signs, and those are the ones thought to come from the gods. We see an example um, of a portent when Theoclymenus uh, just jumps in to the, basically a, almost interrupting a conversation with Penelope on page 359, book 17. Theoclymenus jumps in and gives a kind of portentous uh, statement to Penelope and says, he, he swears by Zeus that Odysseus is already here. Oh. Remember Theoclymenus, he's this uh, person who's come with us, escaping a blood guilt, uh, links up with Telemachus in Pylos and comes with us back to Ithaca. A kind of stranger in our midst is good at reading divine signs. When he lays down uh, this remark, uh, we take note. Uh, we Greeks notice that some slightly spooky stranger whose name means the one who can hear the gods or the one who hears the gods, uh, when that kind of a person says something like Odysseus is already here, well, gosh, we're gonna take note. Uh, the uh, sign that we see on book, uh, signs that we see in book 17 also show up uh, when we hear the statement made that if only Odysseus would come back, that would be you know, a grand thing. We miss Odysseus. At that point, we get a sneeze from Telemachus right at the end, as a punctuation mark to that statement. This comes on page 372. Now, a sneeze in classical Greek times was thought to be a, a divine sign, and it was thought to be a punctuation mark that said that what was just said was indeed true. So when the sneeze comes, whatever was just said just before that was marked as being a sign from the gods and as being indeed true. So when Telemachus on page 372 sneezes right after the statement, if only Odysseus would come back, uh, that's a divine sign telling us, well, my gosh, that's about to happen. There's something, something uh, 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 powerful in that remark and the gods are underli uh, underlying it. Now, in case we uh, missed that uh, connection between sneezes and divine signs, Homer adds another one for us because the sneeze of Telemachus is like a thunder clap. It's compared, in other words, to the most uh, well-known sign from Zeus, uh, the thunderbolt. Uh, oh, this is how Zeus sends us messages. Sadly, the thunderbolt is not too uh, semantically complicated. Uh, it doesn't say you should choose green instead of purple. Uh, it says instead, boom. So what's, you know, it, it gives a strong sense of meaningfulness to whatever is happening or just happened or is about to happen, but it doesn't exactly tell you what the meaning is. Uh, but in any case, this, uh, this uh, uh, authorization that Telemachus gives through his sneeze is underlined by having it being compared to a sign from Zeus, a thunderclap. Uh, in um, uh, book 18, uh, there is a strong speech uh, that comes uh, um, after Odysseus beats the other beggar, and he speaks in a full-throated, ominous way to the suitors on page 380. You know, rah, rah, rah. Uh, he's gotten his, his gumption up because he's bested the other beggar in a, in a, a contest, a, a fighting contest. Uh, so now he kind of feels, his, he's feeling his oats. He's, he's got to, sort of, his energy is coursing through his body. But when he lays down that to the suitors about just how awful they're being and the trouble that they're about to face, uh, it has a kind of air of a, of a divine pronouncement almost because it's so strongly worded. Uh, it's not normal. It sounds almost like something Theoclymenus would say, uh, doesn't it? It has that kind of tone to it and that tonality. Odysseus is becoming then a kind of seer now and reading the ride act to the, to the, uh, to the suitors. Again, they don't notice. Um, so we've got uh, example of, uh, examples of thunder. That shows up itself on page 413. Um, then we have the overheard words, uh, the, the example that we mentioned, plus also another example on page 413. Uh, we see birds being talked about uh, in, on page 418. Uh, and then Theoclymenus has this really spooky direct vision, page 422. You know, blood, blood, you're all washed in blood, you suitors, you're in huge trouble. When he says that, the suitors are like, uh, yeah, I can't quite understand what that's supposed to mean. Bring out some more wine, bring out another goat. Every time these signs come to the suitors, they just brush them off. Uh, Odysseus's inner circle sees what's happening, they feel what's happening, they see the coursing of the energy uh, building toward uh, the, the, the sense that you know, the suitors' days are numbered. The only, the only ones that don't see it are the suitors themselves. Uh, they're just blind to this. They can't read these signs. They are out of the circle of knowledge. 
uh, the most important one of these signs, uh, I think, uh, and the most lengthy uh, and detailed one comes in Book 19. Uh, I want to talk about a couple of other things before we close our discussion of uh, 17 through 20 with a uh, careful consideration of what goes on in Book 19. Lots of moving parts to that book. Uh, a few other preliminaries I want to look at, but in, in closing off our remarks in a couple of lectures, we're going to return to Penelope's dream uh, in Book 19. But before we do, there's a couple of other things uh, I want to make sure we cover first.